Hello everyone, this is Gilbert Jalot. I'm talking to you here from Tufts on Tax. This is Private Corporate Council, downtown Orlando. And this is season five for uh, Tufts on Tax, episode 72. So, hello Scott, how are you th- this year? <laughs> Good to be with you. <laughs> Good to be with you too. Happy New Year. Yes. Uh, a new year, new episode. And today we are talking about deferred annuity tax planning. What can you tell us about so that? So this is this is fascinating. You know, uh, mm-hmm. uh, f- when you start to research and look at this, so we're talking about um, the jock tax, and uh, or this is kind of where I want to go with this, where we start to look at those who now, obviously, the affluent and the wealthy, the athletes, the the uh, actors and actresses and whatnot, but you know, very wealthy people have tax issues that are kind of interesting because uh, we we see someone like um, uh, Otani uh, in the uh, sports world uh, getting the Dodger contract, and he gets in a situation where he's um, going to plan tax planning. And so what happens how, is— How much is he getting? I think well, you know, this is—so he had a record-breaking million. $700 million nice. 10-year contract with the Dodgers. Mm. Um, but— you know, as he it's it's reported that he's going to defer sixty eight million a year of his uh, contract, uh, and the idea would be that okay, so what's going on here, right? So it's reported that he'll take just two million a year in salary and defer the rest, and uh, start to collect uh, the remainder um, of his contract in two thousand thirty four through 2043 um and so the idea would be that he only gets 20 million in the next 10 years not the 700 million as the headlines suggest so you say well what's going on with that and and one of the things that's going on with that is that uh income tax you know the state and federal income tax that can add up on folks and the idea being that if you defer something maybe you don't have to pay tax on it. So, is that true? Yeah, so it depends. Like everything we, we talk about, you know, yeah. how often do you and I talk and we, we get to these episodes and we're saying don't act too quickly, yeah. don't act rashly, don't make any assumptions, you know, look into it, Verify, get to the expert, right? Talk it. to your accountant, think it through, make sure you read the law carefully. Okay. And this is kind of where we go this new season with new things happening. This is a reminder that um, at at a highest level, there's all kinds of things going on as we break it down. So when we talk about deferring compensation, the question is, is it structured carefully to actually defer the tax as well? Because if you earn something, the government will want to tax it, right? Whether you got the cash or not, Mm -hmm. the the inclination is they want to pay the tax. Meaning if I give you a check and you choose to defer it by not depositing it in your account, right? Right. You earn that money and then chose not to cash the check. Should you pay tax on it? Well, the answer should be, generally speaking, yes, you should pay tax on it. You should not be able to say, oh, I'm just not going to deposit it, wink, wink, and as if that's because you're in control of whether you deposit it or not. If it's, if it's you start to get into you earned it, right, the company that paid you the money is going to deduct it. Mm-hmm. So it's only fair that you pay tax on it when you earned it and that we're not going to let you choose to defer it by not depositing it. See, it the doesn't matter. You get it now or later. Right. You chose to not deposit it, mm-hmm. but you did get it now. Yeah. Right. I mean, if they had automatic deposit instead of a check, right. It we went in automatically. We something similar to that back like, I don't know, 10 <laughs> episodes. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So we talk about, how you go about this. So this jock tax is very interesting to me because uh, our athletes out there and the, uh, the ones that are making the you know higher dollars start to think about, okay, where do I live? Where do I play? Is it a state that 
doesn't have a state income tax or, you know, a locale that doesn't have a uh, local tax. Okay. And so you start to look at it and you say, oh, wait a minute, I get it. I've got uh, the opportunity to play, you know, two different states. And uh, so if you're looking at where you might play and you're worrying about um, is it a state that doesn't have income tax, well, we're talking about where, right? We're talking about, you know, Texas, we're talking about Florida, mm -hmm. that doesn't have an income tax, a state income tax, as it were. Mm -hmm. And so then you get into um, uh, those states that don't, and then how that works out, because a state otherwise might have a tax. So um, if if there are so nine, there are the nine states without an income tax, then, you know, where how does that affect your planning, right? So, and then you're starting to think about, well, wait a minute. And it gets even more interesting or more involved than than even I had thought, because what you get into is when you're playing for a team and you earn your money when you play in another state that does have an income tax, can they tax you there? And you say, well, no, I'm a resident of Florida. How can you tax me just because I travel to another state and play football or some other sport? Mm hmm. And they say, wait a minute, you earned it in a stadium or some other place. Therefore, you're subject to jurisdiction there while you were there because you earned money there, right? So you think about it. You earned money in another state. And then you say, well, wait a minute, Scott, that's not how it works in the real world. And I say, well, I, I get that, but when you're a highly publicized um, athlete who is announced to the world how much they're making, then they know how much you're making. They know where you're, when you're in their state. They know uh, the game you're playing and how long you've been there. Uh, it's an easy math, easy thing. So many of the articles I'm seeing written really talk about this and say uh, they call it a jock tax, and it's simply trying to point out how aggressive the states are and the locales to collect their tax on these folks who are living somewhere else but come to their state and pay a tax. And then it raises the other issue. Some of these states and locales have a privilege of operating within their state. They'll charge a fee. And we've got to, our audience certainly knows that you may not call something a tax, but it might be a tax. It might be a fee. It might be a privilege. Mm -hmm. It might be something else, but it's a tax. But we can't call it tax, 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 because you'll feel overtaxed. Not that any of our audience feels overtaxed, but Not the idea. But the idea thing, and you know, I remember hearing this about the VAT and stuff like this. When when they talked about tax reform, you'll hear this quite a bit, right? You'll hear, mm -hmm. oh well, let's pass a flat tax or let's pass a tax. And I'm reminded of what happened. I think it was. Uh, when Florida had its intangible tax and whatnot. And, I, and I'm not sure this is still the case, but I'd be curious if it's still on the books. So think about this. I have a tax. I pass a tax, right? And then we roll it back because, you know, the, we, we, we want to send the message of cutting taxes, right? So we make the mill rate zero, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's pretty easy to leave a law on the books make the rate zero, and then when we need some money, just make the rate one, two, three. Now we have a tax that we can implement on a moment's notice, right? And we haven't had to rewrite the law. We just bring the rate back into play, right? So I think at the end of the day, we talk about the rates, right? You talk about, you know, what 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 is the rate? Is our audience, you know, you want to know that you have a graduated rate, you know, of X percent, so forth. You got in our system, you know, you have is capital gains capped at a certain rate, 20 percent or whatnot. Um, you always want to look at your tables this time of year for each level of income. You pay so much of a percent at a certain level and then you work your way up. Um, and then there's like usually a, a certain amount that everything above that amount you pay at a you know the highest rate let's say 37 percent or 39 percent our um the uh, tax cuts from a number of years ago are going to expire end of next year and uh and of course when it climbs to 39 percent 
at its highest rate. If that's where we are as a country, then that federal tax rate at 39% will be important. Obviously, you add to that, you've got in employment taxes and things like this. The taxes can add up. So the bottom line is Otani in his situation did some planning to defer it, got into where he structured an annuity where it would come later. He said, I'm going to make enough off the annuities and pay, you know, and, and take those endorsements down. Um, but it's it's fascinating to me that uh, you, you, you have to be wary of both state and local taxes. Uh, you're right. Last last season, we talked about a case where the state income tax was coming into play in a K-1 situation. So as we get into this year, we're going to kind of hit things head on, you know, look forward to this season where we're, we're, we're talking about contemporary things. Um, you know, before we went on the air, you know, we're looking at uh, how is uh, crypto, you know, what's the latest with crypto, what's the latest with um, the opportunities that the government has to tax, and then our, our, the people's awareness. So on this show, we're, we're trying to get out in front of that and, and uh, help folks. Basically, I think at the end of the day, the message is, this is complex stuff, and you can't just take a knee-jerk reaction, such as you can't just say, hey, I don't live in a state that has an income tax. I then don't have to worry about state and local tax. That won't be true if you travel. You're earning your money across multiple states. Now you've added much more complexity. So if you're, you've got to be wary of kind of knee-jerk rules that say, you know, I've, I've got this, but I don't have that. So something to keep in mind as we get into this, that while we're not all in Otani's predicament of uh, worrying about deferring uh, $680 million, uh, nice. you don't have that, mm -hmm. right, Issue Gilbert? I, don't, mm -hmm. I know, I don't. But, but, the, but in all seriousness, you know, we got to look at it. And then you got to, you know, maybe one other thing to mention, you know, when I heard the term wealth tax, and the idea that maybe our policymakers are looking at taxing um, um, unrealized capital gain. And uh, you start to think about, well, what does that mean? And that would mean something along the lines of finding a time to tax it now of your gains that you're sitting on that you haven't realized yet. So... You know, I think it puts a, it, it's incumbent upon all of us to all be have brains fully engaged with the information we need, with the experts and the people there to advise you and uh, to read the fine print, maybe, uh, or at least do your best to do that. And then we'll keep at it and see if we can do that. So um, as our season embarks here, we'll we'll keep at it and try and hit these topics that are timely and contemporary uh if it can and then get and get our audience where they hear these things and can um you know realize they've got to get after these issues and look at them a little bit more in depth that's valuable information yeah everyone should uh, uh listen to thank you folks you can call mr t scott tufts at 877-647-7887 again that number is 877-647-7887 or email him at s tufts at pcc.law that's s t u f t s at pcc.law or you can visit the website at privatecorporatecouncil.com. Thank you and have a wonderful day.